Hey. Welcome to Socialism for All. This file is being recorded for the July 2023 edition of Socialism for All. And it's an audiobook of Organization of the Masses by the German Catholics by Lenin from 1913. If you like this video, please click like and subscribe, and consider supporting on Patreon at patreon.com slash socialism for all. There's a link to Patreon in the video description. So this short piece was written on May 20, 1913, published on May 26, 1913 in Pravda number 120, printed from the Pravda text. The source is Lenin Collected Works, Progress Publishers, 1971, Moscow, Volume 36. Translated by Andrew Rothstein, HTML transcription and markup by R. Simbala, and it's in the public domain at the Lenin Internet Archive within the Marxists Internet Archive, Marxists.org, thanks as usual too, MIA for hosting this and thousands of other free Marxist texts. Let's begin. In backward states, where the mass of the people have no rights, where there is no political liberty, where the authorities have arbitrary powers, political organizations on any broad scale are non-existent. Only tiny groups of landowners or millionaire industrialists enjoy the right of association, but they turn all their attention to high quarters, to the spheres, to the authorities, and not only shun but dread any massive organization of the people. In states with assured constitutional foundations and the people's right to take part in government, it's not only the socialists who strive to organize the masses, their only strength lies in educating and organizing the masses, but also the reactionary parties. If the state system has been made democratic, the capitalists must seek support among the masses, and for this, the latter must be organized around the watchwords of clericalism, black hundredism and religion, of nationalism and chauvinism, etc. Comment, the black hundreds in Russia were an extremely reactionary organization of monarchists, anti-Semites, basically proto-fascists, fascism per se, had not yet been developed. Continuing, Political liberty does not eliminate the class struggle, but on the contrary makes it broader and more conscious, drawing into it the most backward sections of the people, and teaching them politics and defense of their views and interests. It's instructive to see how, for example, the German reactionary party of the center, i.e. the Catholics, organizes masses of the people. They strive to get the masses to defend capitalism around the watchwords of religion and, quote, patriotism. And the Catholics in Germany have succeeded in playing up the people's prejudices and ignorance, partly owing to the fact that the Catholics in Germany are a minority of the population, which at one time was subjected to persecution by the state. And the masses of toilers and exploited always instinctively tend to sympathize with those who are persecuted. The Catholic reactionaries have made skillful use of this sentiment. The Catholics have created a mass organization, the so-called People's Union for Catholic Germany. The Union has three quarters of a million members. The organization is strictly centralized. Its aim is to safeguard the Christian, or in practice, capitalist system, and fight, quote, destructive, or socialist, tendencies. The Union is headed by a 24-man board. Of them, nine handle the board's business correspondence, and the rest are representatives of different regions, large cities, etc. There is one agent for every 20 to 40 Catholic families. All the agents act on instructions from the board. The Catholics, when attacking the Social Democrats, comment that was an older name for Marxists prior to the split between what we know today as social democracy, which is reformist, and communism, which is revolutionary, which that name change wouldn't happen until 1917-18. Continuing, usually accuse the Social Democratic agitators of living on the workers' coppers. But in their own organization, the Catholics themselves act in precisely the same way. In every place of any importance, they have paid agitators. Work at the party executive is organized on strictly factory lines. Twenty special officials are in charge of literature. One handles theology, another the agrarian question, a third the social democratic movement, a fourth the artisans, etc. They make cuttings and extracts from newspapers and journals and keep a card index. They have a staff of stenographers. A special library has 40,000 volumes. They draw up letters to the press, quote, reports, which are published by dozens of Catholic papers. Special branches of this correspondence deal with social and political questions and apologetics, i.e. defense of religion and Christianity. Series of booklets are published on all questions. As many as 5,000 sets of speakers' notes on various subjects are sent out every year. A special department deals with propaganda by films. 
an information bureau, answers queries of every kind free of charge. In 1912, it answered over 18 million. Catholic students are regularly recruited for propaganda and agitation, particularly during vacations. The agents, of whom there are several tens of thousands, attend special social courses. There are special two-month courses at the party executive for training to fight the Social Democrats. There are special fortnightly courses for peasants, teachers, shop assistants, etc. The reactionary German Catholics are rather well organized, but all their work is a feeble imitation of the work of the German Social Democrats.